My name is Chandramouli Das. I am studying chemistry at Tufan Ganj Mahavidyalaya. I am going to present my seminar on the topic Green Chemistry Challenges and Opportunities. So, let's get started. At first, let's take a quick look at the contents. Now, Green Chemistry is also called Sustainable Chemistry is an approach to chemistry that endeavors to prevent or reduce pollution. This discipline also strives to improve the yield efficiency of chemicals products by modifying how chemicals are designed, manufactured and used. Now, let's take a step back towards its origin. Green chemistry dates from 1991 when the US Environment Protection Agency launched the Alternative Synthetic Pathways for Pollution Prevention Research Program under the auspices of Pollution Prevention Act of 1990. This program marked radical departure from previous EPA initiatives by emphasizing the production of hazardous substances as opposed to managing these chemicals after they were manufactured and released into the environment. The research program later expanded to include the development of green solvents and safer chemicals. The name green chemistry was officially adopted in 1996. Definition Paul Anastas, one of the principal founders of green chemistry, who defined it as the design of chemical products and processes that reduce or eliminate the use and generation of hazardous substances. Simply, it's the idea of making chemistry more environmentally friendly as well as more sustainable. Principles of Green Chemistry Green Chemistry is generally based on 12 principles proposed by Paul Anastas and John Warner. These principles are Prevent waste formation Atom economy Less hazardous synthesis Design benign chemicals Design solvent and auxiliaries Designs for energy efficiency Use of renewable feedstock Reduce derivatives, catalysis, design for degradation, real-time analysis for pollution prevention, and inherently benign chemistry for accident prevention. Challenges and opportunities The green chemistry revolution is providing an enormous number of challenges to those who practice chemistry in industry. Some of biggest challenges towards a green future are energy crisis, global climate change, and toxic waste in the environment. However, there are an equal number of opportunities to discover and apply green chemistry to enhance the much tarnished image of chemistry. Now let's see how we can apply green chemistry to overcome these challenges. Energy crisis. Currently, the energy supply of the world is largely based on the combustion of carbons. The extraction and collection of carbon through mining, drilling, processing, etc. has well documented environmental consequences. The production of carbon dioxide and other gases has been cited as contributing to global warming both by International Panel on Climate Change as well as the National Academy of Sciences in the US. Projection of energy need suggests that energy demand will continue to increase in order to support development and growing population. So the question is that what type of energy we need for a sustainable future? Here green power comes into play. Green power or green energy is a term used to describe sources of energy that are renewable, easily available in nature, environmentally friendly, and harness natural processes such as geothermal energy, wind energy, and solar energy. Now, let's talk about some of these green powers or energies. Solar power. Solar power is the most prevalent type of renewable energy. Solar power is typically produced using photovoltaic cells which capture sunlight and turn into electricity. Solar energy is also used to heat building and water, providing natural lighting and cook food. 
wind power. Airflow on the earth's surface can be used to push turbines with stronger winds producing more energy. High altitude areas just offshore tends to provide the best condition for capturing strongest winds. 2.5 megawatt wind turbines in rural areas operating at just 20% of their capacity could supply 40 times the current worldwide consumption of energy. Geothermal energy. Just under earth crust are massive amounts of thermal energy which are originates from both the original formation of planets and radioactive decay of minerals. In North America alone, there's enough energy stored underground to produce 10 times as, as much as electricity as coal currently does. Now, let's talk about a less hazardous route to produce energy. China has proposed to use ethanol instead of methyl tert-butyl ether, in short MTBE, as a gasoline additive to produce energy. The environmental effects of E10, which is 10% maize ethanol added to 90% gasoline, and M10, which is 10% MTBE added to 90% gasoline, were evaluated and compared. The results showed that the environmental impact of E10 was 15.4% lower than that of M10, thus replacing MTB with ethanol reduces the total environmental impact. Global Climate Change Global warming is an aspect of climate change referring to the long-term rise of planet's temperature. It is caused by increased concentration of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. We need to minimize the generation and releases of greenhouse gases to atmosphere to reduce the harmful effects of global warming. Green chemistry research is seeking to design and develop method that will utilize carbon dioxide in fixative ways that are value adding. Changing the equation from carbon dioxide as a waste to using it as a value-added feedstock would be an essential pathway to dealing with the goal of controlling carbon dioxide. Scientists found that carbon dioxide molecule in supercritical condition could be used as a solvent. Supercritical carbon dioxide is carbon dioxide that is held beyond supercritical conditions of 31.1 degree Celsius temperature and 73.8 bar pressure. The use of supercritical carbon dioxide provides an alternative to conventional organic solvents in a wide range of applications including extraction, impregnation, formulation, sterilization, cleaning energy, and waste treatment. Some examples of the industrial application based on the utilization of supercritical carbon dioxide. In food industry, the use of supercritical carbon dioxide as an extraction solvent for natural products is the oldest and most developed process on an industrial scale. Decaffeination of coffee is the first example of the industrialization of supercritical fluids. The decaffeinated coffee produced presents a full aromatic profile as a result of low temperature used and absence of organic solvent. The extracted caffeine on other side sold to the pharmaceutical and food industries, therefore very little waste formed at the end of this process. In pharmaceutical industry, the, among the spectrum of plants, diterpenes, triterpenes or even tetraterpenes can be easily extracted using supercritical carbon dioxide. In the plastic industry, the diffusion of supercritical carbon dioxide in polymers is accompanied by swelling of these materials and a change for this, their physiochemical properties. Supercritical carbon dioxide is a good plasticizing agent because it reduces glass transition temperature. Examples of application include the impregnation of medical materials, the purification of polymers, from residual solvents or monomers. Supercritical carbon dioxide can be used as an individual refrigerant to keep things cool. Building that needs to stay cool, stay cold, like supermarkets, food.
food processing facilities and warehouses. Thanks to supercritical carbon dioxide, a building's climate impact can be reduced by approximately 15% while also replacing chlorofluorocarbon and hydrofluorocarbon, which are greenhouse gases that are commonly used for refrigeration. Toxic waste in the environment the generation and release of toxic substances to the environment remains a global issue. In the US alone, over 7 billion pounds were released directly to air, land and water in the most recent TRI reporting. Persistent bioaccumulating and endocrine disrupting chemicals are of serious concern in both industrialized and developing world. To prevent the formation of waste in the first place is one of the biggest challenges toward a sustainable future. The development of new pharmaceutical products by, organized synthesis, by organic synthesis over the past century has contributed to a revolution in medical care enabling dramatic reduction in hospitalization, suffering and death. However, this achievement is flawed if the environment is adversely impacted. In the pharmaceutical industry, for every kilogram of value produ uh, val uh, valuable products used on an average 25 to 100 kg waste is created. The purpose of green chemistry is to reinvent manufacturing process in order to reduce or eliminate waste and toxicity. Example, ibuprofen is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug used worldwide for pain relief, fever, and inflammation reduction. The synthetic procedure to synthesize ibuprofen was patented by Boots Pure Drug Company in 1916s. This synthetic process involved six complicated steps generated a considerable amount of chemical waste. Atom economy, which is the conversion efficiency of a chemical process in terms of all atoms involved and desired product produced is only about 40% in this process. Later, BHC company unveiled a new alternative process of synthesizing ibuprofen that was completed in only four steps and more environmentally friendly. Overall, atom economy of this process is 77%, which is almost double that of the both synthesis. Toxicity in the environment can be reduced by inventing alternative synthetic route for feedstock and starting materials. Dimethyl carbonate or DMC is an important chemical intermediate that can be used as a fuel additive and polar solvent in the chemical industry. Traditional method for the production of DMC involves the use of phosgene and methanol. The use of phosgene root is phased out from commercial process as phosgene is one of one of the most acutely toxic substances. As the root presents inherent hazard potential environmental problems in handling and waste disposal, it re it's replaced by a more sustainable method, which is direct synthesis of BHC from carbon dioxide and methanol. This route is particularly attractive for being carbon dioxide based as carbon dioxide can be environmentally friendly and widely available feedstock. The challenges in research and resource and environmental sustainability require more efficient and benign scientific technologies for chemical process and manufacture of products. Green chemistry addresses such challenges by opening a wide and multifaceted research scope, thus allowing the invention of novel reactions that can maximize the desired products and minimize the waste and byproducts. Green chemistry into practice will eventually help the help to pave the way to a world where grass is greener. I took help from these books and websites to complete this seminar. Finally, I would like to thank my professor, Dr. Bobli Roy, 
who gave me the golden opportunity to do this wonderful wonderful project on the topic green chemistry challenges and opportunities which also helped me in during a lot of research and i came to know about so many new things i'm really thankful with green chemistry we can make the world a better place for our future generations thank you for watching